Coming up on Relatables. Things guys do when they like you, they'll think about you when they're at the gym. Ooh. <laughs> All these other girls walking around, I don't care. Yeah. She is the only girl in my mind. Exactly. I agree with that. That's one. how you know you like a girl. Yeah. Is that, that I'm that's how we, about that's how we know. Do what you want to do. Be what you want to be. Relatables. You are listening to Relatables Season 3, Episode 4. Woo! Woo, baby. Woo! Where's Episode 3, though? You oh. guys just listened to Episode 2. We're plugging early. Early. Hey, Patreon. Patreon's where it's What's at, guys. What's the stats? What's the stats? I've forgotten. What do you mean, stats? <laughs> How much is it a month? Ah, uh, five bucks a month. How much is that a week? Dollar twenty-five a week. And how much is that a day? Seventeen cents a day, you fucking cheap skates. Bastards. Come on. Girl, math that shit up. That's <laughs> like basically free. 17 cents a day. We got told by someone from America that it works out to be about like nine cents a day American. Mm. So if you're from America, mm. sign but up. Honestly, go do it because. There's an extra episode there. And yeah, there's some good stuff. And we we know for a fact a few people will be signing up in the next month. Ooh, if you get in there early. We've got be- something exciting. Don't say it. Don't say it. See, I'm not talking about it. Okay, before we get into, we're giving up our wrapped, podcast wrapped and our personal wrap. But before we do that, before we do that Jake, mm. I just had something to say that I, as a man, any or anyone I struggle to say. <laughs> <laughs> Stop now, I'm looking at you funny. <laughs> okay, okay, none this is serious. Fuck. I just want to say that I love you as a person, as a friend, a podcast host, and I really appreciate the journey that we're going on together, and I'm excited to see what the future has for us together. Damn. I'm going to cry, man. <laughs> no, I love you too. Thanks, man. Damn. And it's hard to say, but no, I... No, we don't say we it. We don't say it, like... We, you guys know us for the potty, but me and Jake like hanging out with each other like twenty four seven. It's pretty insane. And um, there's always, I feel like a lot of people have an unwritten rule of that they love people. But I'm just saying, you should say it more often. Even though mm. it's especially for men, it's hard. But just for anyone, tell your parents, tell your friends, just tell them, surprise them like that, and just say I love you. Because how did that feel? It felt good. Yeah, it felt good. It I felt can, really I good. can imagine it did. Mm. How's <laughs> actually going off that? So my mum sent me this random link today. Yeah. And and I was like, I was like, well, she always sends me stuff like links and stuff. And I was like, what are you? Are you hacked? Like, was like <laughs> so I was like, what's this? And then she calls me. Yeah. Like Facetime. She was at the gym. Facetime me. She's like, oh, so what it is? And I and, she, and I was like, I'm busy. But she's like, oh, you're at the gym. And I was like, yeah. She just kept talking. Uh, <laughs> she just doesn't know. Um, but so she was like, she was like, oh, so what it is is I listen to this podcast and she, the lady that hosts the podcast is like a psychotherapist. She said she just like talks, she doesn't do psychotherapy on it, but she just talks about interesting things, has cool guests on. And there's this guy that comes on that's been on a few times and this lady that hosts the podcast raves about him. And so she sent me this thing that he did. So apparently just with years of research. So there was like, ever, everyone has like a primal question. And so actually, oh, I screenshot it. But um, so what it is, so I went and I answered probably like 35 questions. Yeah. And you have to like strongly agree to like, there's like a, Thing. strongly agree strongly disagree yeah. in the middle whatever little questionnaire little questionnaire did a fair few questions and so what it comes back to you with is your your primal question and so apparently my primal question is question number three and it is am i loved oh shit and um and so before i sent my results to my mom i was like what do you think it is because like i don't want you to just i don't want to send it to you and then you just be like one of those like ladies that love star signs and like she goes yeah 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 makes sense you're an aquarius yeah yeah so i sent it to her but before so she was like um i think yours is going to be am i wanted Ooh. and i was like oh that's pretty close actually so yeah. i was like oh no it's am i loved and then my core need is to feel known seen and emotionally attached my core fear is being dismissed unheard and unseen my kryptonite is indifference towards you so that means like what people think of me which yeah. They're all incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna. You have, your fear of being unheard is quite like funny because you have a podcast. I mean, true. Maybe that makes sense. Maybe I started the podcast because I want to be heard. Yeah. But um, I think the kryptonite indifference towards you, which I think means like I care what people think, 
Yeah, I don't really care what people think. Like, I do a bit. I don't think you do. But that's not my kryptonite. Yeah. My kryptonite is pussy. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. That was just... That was, I lined it up really well. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh. Um, but my core need to feel known... I don't know. But then the Am I Loved thing was like... I was like, I don't know if I believe this, mum, because quite often I will think about um, how hard my dad fought to have a relationship with us yeah. while there was like a sticky situation, like a bad breakup between my mom and him. Mm -hmm. And um, so my mom, like we went to Canada and stuff and like my dad did everything. Like my dad had no money for the longest time because he would spend all his money on holidays to Canada just to see me and my sister. And then he comes over and he like gets us from Canada. We live in Australia. He's given us like obviously the most amazing life. Um, not to say that my life in Canada wasn't good. Like it was obviously mm -hmm. great. I had a great childhood, my whole childhood. But um, I just have been very lucky the whole time. Like I know my mom loves me. My step, like I have a stepdad that I know loves me. Stepmom loves me. Dad absolutely loves me. Like, so I don't, the whole feeling love thing, I was like, this guy's a, this is a bunch of bullshit, mom. Mm -hmm. I gave him my email and phone number for nothing. And I'm going to get texts every month saying, <laughs> yeah. how's your primal question going? I'm going to be like, fuck off. <laughs> so, oh. and also, the, and I don't, and I also knew, I knew that you loved me beforehand. Mm. I know we don't say it often, but I knew it. Mm. But it's still, yeah, sorry, I think it's a bunch of bullshit. Okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, apparently there's research behind it. So, what, okay, what are we doing now? We're going to Spotify gonna go wrapped. Spotify wrapped. Firstly, we're going to go, you want to get your stats up? Are we doing mine or are we going to do the podcast? Go mine? podcast first. Okay, so this is we where we post the podcast actually gave us our Spotify wrap for podcasters. And this is going to tell us what we are in the world. So it says, oh, really? No, in Australia, I mean. Okay, so it says your 2023 wrapped for podcasters is here. Let's go explore it. Loading up. Loading. It's kind of, oh, this is exciting Ooh. to be honest. Relatables, your rap is here. Let's go. Speaking of top, your top episode was season two, episode 17, how to tell if a guy likes you. Yeah. Mm, actually, they, hold on, later. Yeah, later. Uh, later. That's funny. It was streamed 514% more than your average episode. Okay, that's crazy. 514%, that's a lot. Let's hear, let's hear it for the new fans. Thanks, guys. We love you. Come on, I thought this was going to be cool. 98% of your listeners discovered you in 2023. That makes a lot of sense. Yes. <laughs> that makes so much sense. <laughs> Season two, episode 11. Things we love about women really brought them in. 12%, this is boring. 12 of your stats, listeners eh? started here. How, how does it feel to have gone global? Ooh, okay. That's what we want. Yeah. Global, baby. You were streamed in 100 countries. Let's go. Australia was your top country with 42% yeah. of your total streams. Makes sense. Yeah, buddy. The most new listeners in Australia, United Kingdom, United States, Germany, Germany, and Netherlands. Let's go. That's pretty cool. That's very cool. Fuck. That's actually sick. Your listeners have good taste, obviously. So what else are they into? Oh, this gives us an insight on what our listeners are into. Your listeners' top genres were comedy, society and culture, and health and fitness. I mean, that kind of- that Makes sense. Fucking hell. Your listeners' music genres, pop, rap, rock. Yeah. You guys are all basic. That's because you listen to Jake Sigan. Yeah, true. Your your listeners definitely told their friends about you. Facts. Let's go. Your podcast was was shared all over. 36% direct link, 19% Instagram, 19% text, 18% WhatsApp, Ooh. and 8% other. What's that? Interesting. It's all those, the miss, um, in fact, your most shared episode was season two, episode 11. Things all about women. Your podcast rating is 4.9 out of 5. That's pretty good. We yeah. want 5, though. Yeah, we want 5. 5 star that up. 5 star that up, boys and girls. Can't forget to shout out your biggest fans. This is what we want. Oh, here we go. This is what we want. Your top 10 podcast for 26... You're a top 10 podcast for 21,869 fans. Let's go. That's how many people follow us. What? Yeah. Holy fuck. <laughs> You're a top 5 podcast... For 15,667 fans. Yeah. Drum roll, please. This is what I wanted. This is what we want. Come on, give me the next one. You're the number one podcast for 4,295 fans. What does it mean, number one? That means that they rate you. Like, oh. So we are 4,295 right. fans, number one favorite podcast. Let's go. That's fucking sick. 5K of you, baby. Number one. Man. Okay, so apparently it doesn't tell you. I swear I saw it on another podcast, but I'm just going to go on Australian top charts right now. What are we at the moment? We've been we've been sitting in the top 100 in Australia for a long time. Top 100 in New Zealand. Yeah. What are we in top 100 anywhere else? We we, we jump in Netherlands and stuff mm, and like Sweden. Funny. The Netherlands. Um, but today in Australia we're number 30th. 
We were number 25 the other day, which is really cool. Fuck. But we're number 30 in all of Australia. And I think we're fifth in society and culture, which is our genre we are. So I just want to say, like, that's a wrap of the year. It's been a massive year for Jake and I. It's been fun. Next the- year is going to be fucking get... Wait, next year. What's that feeling? Ooh. Next year it's going to be number one, number one, number one, number one, number one. That's it. And it all, comes, one, one, it all comes down to you guys. You guys. Just big thank you. We love you. All right. And we'll do... So we'll do ours quickly too. So but we'll do a keep it nice and simple. And so, ready? My top artists... I've got it gives you top five. Yeah. Number one, Noah Khan. Yep. Number two, Dave. Oh, really? That's interesting. Number three, Spacey Jane. Yeah. Number four, Tory Lanes. And number five, Luke Combs. Oh. I have five different genres. That's very different. That's you correct. do listen to everyone. I listen to everything. He's mine. Fred again. Still. Yeah, number one. Number two, Lumineers. Mm-hmm. Three, Noah Khan. Yeah. Four, Ziggy Alberts. Yeah. Five, DMAs. You kind of you listen to different stuff too. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Mine's a bit of everything. So I do the only thing I have different to you is I have a rap guy in there. Yeah. Okay, my top podcasts. Yeah. Yours and I are gonna be yeah, different wait, here. Wait. I don't think we're gonna have one of the same. You yeah, reckon? I don't think so. I hope so. I mean I hope we have one. You're a dog if we're not in there. You're in a you're a dog. One second. I'm gonna say mine, then you say yours. You're not gonna I already know. My top five podcasts. Your mum's house, Christina P and Tom Zagura. Yeah. Shits and gigs. The Joe Rogan Experience, which I don't really remember listening to. Two Bears, One Cave, and Bad Friends. You are a terrible podcast host. Where are the relatables? My, Go, tell me your top five. Armchair Expert with Dak Shepard. Yeah. You wouldn't. Relatables. The Inspired Unemployed, Shits and Gigs. Okay, I just have something to ask you. <laughs> Oddie. Yeah. You listen to your own podcast enough for it to be in your top five podcasts. <laughs> no, so... That's... I- Fucking crazy. I listen to all the start of the episodes and then play out just to make sure they uploaded, up, uploaded them right. Is this uh, is this an excuse? I hope that's do you what I listen do. to your own podcast? That's what I do. I make sure they upload. So you sometimes just listen I stuff to the up. intro and you make sure it like, has uploaded properly. Yeah, okay. normally I just listen to the intro. That's that's probably why it's got in there because I don't listen to Shits and Gigs at all anymore. So that's, Are they in there? That's number five and it's still in there. Okay. So I, I didn't listen to them at all. Yeah, yeah. Fuck, I've been grinding them yeah. lately. But interesting, guys. Big yeah, th- big thank you. Big thanks again. Let's get into it. Do what you want to do. Be what you want to be. Relatables. Okay, guys, dilemmas. Um, I just wanted to say there's a lot and we're trying to get them through them all, but to have more of a chance to get in dilemmas, Patreon has their own dilemmas, which we go and only read for the and Patreon episode. so there's episode. a lot less. You wouldn't have noticed. I even posted it on the Patreon th- episode today. The dilemmas thing. So if you want to read, there's a, there's probably, there's a, what's a, it's like, a, I don't even, probably a 1% chance you're going to get a dilemmas if you do it on the normal episode. I think if you go do it in the normal episode, so if you're sending it to us via Instagram, there's a fucking 0.5% chance. Yeah. And then if you send it via the link in our link tree in the Google Docs, I'm going to say there's about like a, Four to five percent chance. Yeah, because there's so many. But Patreon, there's probably like a, at the moment twenty five percent chance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 True. Oi, maybe more though, because not everyone's going to send one. Yeah, hundred percent. So currently in Patreon, there's maybe like an eighty percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so get, get on, on there. there quick. Pay for pay for pay for Patreon. If you want your d- dilemmas heard. Yeah. But for now, hi Jack and Oddie. Love your guys' podcast. To give some detail, I'm a twenty three year old female from the US, and I recently separated from the military where I was married. In May of this year, I left my husband and I'm currently in the process sorry, of filing for divorce. Since I've moved back home, I've started to go on dates and meet new people. I've recently met someone on a dating app and him and I have been inseparable since. Oh. I could see this turning into something and I really care for this man and it's everything I've always looked for in a man. I'm completely over my marriage as I have been emotionally checked out before we even split. However, I am scared to move forward with this new guy. I have decided that I wasn't going to make anything official until my divorce is final, which also gives us more time to get to know each other. I also don't want to go from relationship to relationship as I wanted to stay single for a while and just learn myself again. However, I can't deny how I feel and part of me wants to say screw it and listen to my heart and put put it all, all, all into this new relationship, but my brain is holding me back. I just don't know what to do. We are exclusive and have decided that he is going to, he's not putting any pressure on me and or me to make, make a decision, but I don't want to waste time because life is short. Please help. Thank you. Whoa. Oh, I is, wonder how, so she's 23. 
She was married. Ooh. How long ago did she file? I re- I have recently missed that since moved home. Yeah, it doesn't say. It doesn't say how long ago she filed for divorce. But I mean, I guess it wasn't too. But this long is a ago. really responsible dilemma. That is, you can uh, you can tell you were married. I thought you were going to be like forty. Yeah, but then I remembered you said twenty three. We get a lot of things that are like, I oh, this guy fucked me. Which one should I choose? This one is really. I really like, and also I want to say big shout out to the US listeners. We've been getting a lot of. Yeah, them. we really appreciate little, you. We love you. Well, I mean, anyone anyway, okay. but for some reason we get lots of love. I want to help her out. Same, same. So do I. Okay. What I'm torn too. What should she do? Well, I think I'm thinking with my heart and my brain at the same time. I don't know. That's a, that's a massive relatable thing that you don't know. You're torn. Between this your, is so relatable. You're torn between your heart wants and your brain's logical, but your heart doesn't know what logic means. And it's mm. just like, urgh. I'm thinking because it's your first one, listen to your brain. You think? Because she's been through all these emotions, just mm. divorce. She's loved this man. She's now not in love with this man, even though she said it happened a long time ago. She said she was signed out emotionally a long time ago with her husband, though. Yes. And I think going back into it's so exciting that love could be lost at lust at the moment. And to find that out for sure, just wait. So what I think is good, though, is that they, they've decided, like, look, we're not going to see other people. Yeah. We're going to keep seeing each other. And he isn't putting any pressure on her to make a big decision. He seems like a good bloke. He seems like a very nice guy. I can see why you're torn. Mature. You can, I can see why yeah. you're torn. He's definitely a little older. Yeah. Isn't he? You're 23, he's probably about 28. Yeah. Ready to settle down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so it says decision, but I don't want to waste I don't want to waste time because life is short. At the same time, look, life is short, but you're only 23. Yeah, it's not that short. You already, so, took, you already took the risk and got married with that life is short motto and it didn't work for you. So, so. Yo, yeah, exactly. But... I think that what you're doing is I think that if he is is happy, if you're mm. so if you guys are both happy to be exclusive, like so and I'm talking like you're not you're not a boyfriend, girlfriend, you guys are seeing each other and he, he's happy to wait and like you guys aren't seeing anyone else. I think that if you guys keep getting to know each other, mm. you just gotta take your time because it might get to a point where you you're like, Oh no, like I actually I actually do want to be alone for a while. But if you jump into a new relationship yeah. right now, you're going to feel a little stuck because you're going to be like, oh no, I, I just wasted like, I don't know. I just wasted six months of this guy's time. Like I feel so bad. I'll just stay with him for a bit longer. And Literally. then you get stuck in it. I think that's, so you're saying listen to her brain as well. So I'm, I'm, but I'm, not, I'm actually thinking like stick on the same trajectory. I, I agree. I think you're doing everything yeah. right. Yeah. Like I would say um, like you're in a good position that he's chill, happy to wait. Um, and it's your life. If you want to take your time, take your time. If he starts wanting to rush things, then you got to say to him, look, no, it, this, this is your life. You got to be like, look, no, I understand if you want to rush things. I know this is your life, but this isn't how I want to do it. So I'm sorry, but I'm not budging on my stance. But if you really, if you can't wait, then we can't be together. I think you just needed reassurance that you're doing the right thing. And yeah, I think you you've are. got it here. You've got reassurance here for sure. Yeah. That was so, you're very responsible. Jake and I are in your corner. Definitely. Okay. <sighs> Hi, I am looking for some advice on a situation I have been pondering for a really long time. I like that word. I have a guy best friend. Shut the fuck up. Okay, <laughs> sorry, I'm gonna, I'm getting, I'm gonna get through this. I choose this one for Jake for a reason. <laughs> I have a guy best friend. Let's call him Chad. Good name. He has had a girlfriend for over a year. Before Chad got with his girlfriend, he asked me out. I wasn't ready for a relationship, and so I turned him down. Some best friend. Over the past year, me and Chad have begun to spend a lot more time together, and I have developed feelings for him. (sighs) I am friends with his girlfriend. And one time at a party, she said that if they ever broke up and that me and Chad should get together, Chad himself said on the several occasions that he wishes things were different when I talk about wanting a BF or relationships. Wait, can I read? Am yeah, I you wrote it right. I did. Yeah. Okay. Let me. Wishes her views were different. Oh, so her. Yeah. So his girlfriend is saying like, if if me and Chad break up, you guys should get together. What the fuck? Yeah. Okay. Chad is a farmer and comes from a traditional background where you marry and have children young. Consequently, this is extremely important, to Chad. <laughs> me and Chad have regularly <laughs> spoken about this and seem to have the same views. However, his current girlfriend has recently said that she wasn't sure if she wants uh, wanted kids or even to get married. This all came to his head the other night and when Chad drove me home from an event, he had to drop one he had to drop one other person off first who lived further away from me so it would have made sense to drop me first. However, he drove all the way to this person's house and then back to mine taking the long route. 
I can't help but think this was on purpose. When he arrived at, at my house, I went to get out of the car and he shared a look that gave me butterflies. Ooh. This may have been nothing, but it felt like he got he got them too. So the question is, should I shoot my shot or wait it out? Did his girlfriend basically give me a free pass? I'd love to hear your thoughts. You don't want to know my thoughts. <laughs> I want to know. Um, <laughs> I just... <laughs> I just, I want to know your name because I want to tell everyone your name and I want to tell everyone, don't waste my fucking time. <laughs> I just read that long ass fucking novel. All right. Don't waste my fucking time again with the best friend shit. I'm fucking sick of it. You're not friends. You're not uh, friends. You are not. You're the furthest thing from friends. You guys are in love with each other. His girlfriend is literally just like, she, she, she's a fucking cuck. Oh, yeah. She's a straight up cuck. <laughs> oh, man. Did you, did you see the messages we got from these two girls? Which one? About best friends? No, no, no. Wait, we got long in-depth method, me- method, message. 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 No, I didn't. About from this girl and she was talking about her. She was her, with a friend yeah. and they were messaging to us. And I replied. And then she sent another message. So I sent a voice message. Yeah. I was like, look. I was like... This is just how Oddie and I see it. Mm. All right. Let me explain it one more time. <laughs> Oddie and I believe that friends, that like a guy and a girl can be friends. Okay. Oddie and I have friends that are girls. Mm-hmm. Okay. But we don't have a best friend that's a girl. Nah. And the reason for that is because if we did, that would either mean we have feelings for her or she has feelings for us. And one of us doesn't feel that way. One's the Lulu. So we also think that best friend is a very strong word and gets thrown around very loosely, like the word love, Mm -hmm. hate, you know, all that type of stuff. Those are very strong. You don't love, like if you have a girlfriend or if you have a boyfriend, you only love him. You don't love another boy as well. If you have a best friend, why would you have another best? Like we, that's how we look at it, okay? This is just our opinion. So if you have a guy best friend and you don't want to fuck him, he wants to fuck you, okay? It's just fucking knowledge. It's just common knowledge because it doesn't work that way. Facts. So to help her, I think that <laughs> what's going on in this situation, oh, I just got super hot yeah. doing all that. <laughs> so what's going on in your situation is, I'm here for it. Fuck it, I'm here for it. I think you should just honestly fuck it. I don't even care. I just want you to shoot your shot. I want you to ruin that other girl's life. I don't even care anymore. <laughs> I don't like you at all. I'm sorry. This is just bullshit. Don't waste my time. What do you think? Oh, uh, if we're going, because she's our list, the right thing to do is you're an idiot and you're just an idiot as well. I think you should wait it out is the responsible thing to do. But if you want to be selfish and chuck yourself in the situation, you can see that the relationships are eventually going to. Um, fault in between Chad and her, his girl and you're going to jump in no matter what mm. so you can either wait and be like a good person or you can just shoot your shot now and then get happy early but either way you put yourself in a terrible situation yeah and you did this is why your relationship with him is fucking on the edge of a sword right now yeah so alright so good luck yeah good luck don't come to us with the, res- with the answer because <laughs> we don't care <laughs> okay guys I, I just had to leave the room <laughs> I just had to take a break because I was sweating because I was so angry. I was literally, if you're watching on YouTube, what you would have seen was steam coming out of my ears. Yeah. Like a cartoon character. And I'm feeling very worked up after that, but I feel better now. I'm relaxed. You might need another break. What? I strategically put this. Did you just, did you just read, did you read yours before I came in? I strategically put those two one after the other. You might not Maybe I think I, I think I went too hard on the first one. Yeah. So I'll probably be I'll probably be chilling. <laughs> no, I think one. you're gonna be even worse on this one. Fuck, okay. Um but I've got a towel with me. <laughs> it's hot in here. So yeah. All okay, right. hi both. I listen weekly and would love to hear you guys' opinion on this. I slept with my boy best friend. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Did uh, you now? <laughs> shush, shush. I'm really struggling with what to do now, and I need an outsider's help. So please, I slept with my boy best friend, Brian, this weekend. Firstly, Chad and Brian, get more creative with your names. Me and Brian. What if his name's actually Brian? (laughs) No one's name's Brian. (laughs) (laughs) Facts. That's so true. Me me and Brian have been really good friends for almost two years now. I had a thing with one of his mates after getting out of a long-term relationship. Whenever things went sour, I always um, 
I always spoke to Brian and he would always help me through and would talk to me about his family problems and we'd always have good personal chats. I haven't seen or spoken to the friend in almost a year after breaking things off. Um, and Brian doesn't see him that often either, but, but has loyalty to him. So that was the friend that they broke off with initially. Okay. Brian and I have kissed before and ne- never anything further. And this was when we were newly friends. We hang out almost, on most weekends um, and often just the two of us. I noticed I started to have feelings for him but kept these down as we were really good friends. I always felt like he wouldn't like me back um, in the ways due to his loyalty to his friend. Okay. The other night we were chatting about um, how he's been distant with me recently and I said I miss my friend. One thing led to another. We kissed and then slept together. Uh, after this, he said that he's been weird because he felt tension between us in brackets. Did he just say that because we just had sex? After, it was normal. We had cuddles after in the morning. It was like nothing weird had ever happened because it was just normal after. Was it though? <laughs> I was happy that we slept together and I wanted it to happen again. Do I message him about it and lay it all my cards out, potentially ruining the friendship if he rejects me? Or do I say do I not say anything and wait to see what happens? Um, so she's wondering if she either says something and puts all the, um, all the things on the card and ruins the friendships, or keeps quiet and hopefully things peter out themselves and they fall in love. I like so she ended that with from a very confused girl. Yeah, please help from a very confused girl. Very stupid fucking girl. Yeah. <laughs> if it was a guy, I would say a stupid guy. I'm not just saying it because it's a girl. Yeah, I agree. Um, that was long too and you, I don't normally pick long ones but I did because I had a bone to pick as well Jake's the man who likes to show his emotions I'm more level head but I'm also not happy I can say it in a more sensible way but come on guys you just need to admit to yourself that you're not best friends you catch feelings that as soon as you caught feelings you should realise that we're not best friends I'm in love with this man yeah, you're, oh. not, you're not friends yeah you never were um, friends and now you both <sighs> also like I'm Okay, like it pissed me off that she's slept with her best friend. So I just like kind of started angry. And so then I was like really getting like super upset that she just was like jibber jabbering on like for a really long time yeah. and like wrote a really long dilemma. <laughs> but I mean, like, I guess we're the ones that chose it. Yeah. We ask people for dilemmas. Basically, the way I look at this one is okay, I'm not going to be a jerk. I'm going to be honest and I'm going to be nice in an honest way, but whatever. So. You guys obviously weren't really ever friends from the start. Mm -hmm. And I think that you need to just admit that kind of straight away. Like you weren't friends from the start. Your friendship's Um, already ruined. Yeah. So so you weren't friends from the very start, okay? So as soon as you admit that, it's basically you're just like admitting like, oh, okay, like I was just like, I was with, so I was with his friend because I liked that friend at the time, but then I'd met him and I just like, you know, you were trying to be nice, trying to be good. And then you wanted to stay with him as your best friend because... Like you just wanted him around because you obviously liked him. Mm. Okay. You've kissed before, nothing further. But then the other night you were chatting and you, he was, you were like, we've been distant and I miss my friend. You didn't miss your friend. You missed the guy that you like. Okay. You like him. You obviously really, really like him. And I do think that the reason that he, I have a feeling that he is like maybe a little bit mature, a little bit, like a little bit level headed in the way that it's like, um, so he distanced himself because he probably found himself catching feelings. Like he, I think he, so. he felt tension. So he was probably like, Oh, look, I need to distance myself because I value the friendship. Um, and like, I think I'm starting to like her. So he's probably accepted that. And then he's also maybe thinking about his friend. So he's maybe thinking like, Oh yeah, my friend might he, cause his friend might still like you. You never know what ends up happening is, is like, it's a really bad thing to admit. But it's just like the thing. It's what what happens with guys is like some 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 I don't like not every guy, but some guys really do think with their doodle. Mm-hmm. And so I think what happened here was like he what you were like I miss my friend, and then you may you he just was probably like you know what fuck it like I I, I miss my I miss hanging out with her too, even though if if I like her it doesn't matter I just want to keep her around because some people are like that they just want to stay around the person they like and then just say that they're best friends just to say just so people think they're not Dating. having feelings. Yeah. And so what ended up happening was one thing led to another and you had sex. Now, so it's pretty obvious that you both want something and I have a feeling his head is probably in the same space as yours right now. I agree. So, fuck it and go tell him that you like him because I'm 100% sure I can bet my life that he's going to like you too and you guys are going to go for it and you guys are going to live happily ever after. All righty, am I the asshole? <laughs> he's back. He's happy. he's happy. All right. Am I the asshole? I'm currently friends with benefits with a guy at my uni. It's been going on a year. Oh, friends with benefits for a year? Fuck. Um, and no one knows that we even know each other. 
You guys must be good. We sneak it in, we sneak into each other's houses, shoot each other looks across the bar on weekends, and give signal when we want to leave to go hook up. This is kind of sexy. He has a girlfriend of three years, and oh wait. He has a girlfriend of three years and I know it's toxic, but it's just so exciting and we are really sexually compatible. It is always really fun and a bit kinky when we hook up. Afterwards, we always just sit, chat, laugh, etc. We get on really well and he admitted if when we hook up afterwards, we... Oh, wait. And he admitted if when we first met, um, he would have wanted to date me instead. We agreed, though, from the beginning, it's just sex and friendship with no strings or feelings. So there would be no need for manipulation to get me to sleep with him. And I have zero feelings for him. He is extremely attractive and satisfi- satisfies the fuck out of me. I don't think I'm the asshole because I'm single and he is the only one who owes loyalty to anyone. He should be faithful, but he has needs. He has made the choice to cheat. He has needs and has made the choice to cheat. If it wasn't this, if it wasn't with me, I know it would be with another girl. Part of me feels like I should feel bad for his girlfriend, and the other part of me is loving this whole situation. Am I the asshole? Wait, is this a listener? Yeah, that is so fucked up. Mm, three years. If a no, so it's been going on for a year, and he's been dating his girlfriend for three years. Yeah, what's with people would like have a there? dude? If like fucking, if let's say. It, like, st- stop listening to our... Fuck you. <laughs> stop listening to our podcast. These were all terrible. <laughs> they were. What the hell? Yeah, mo- your moral compass is a little bit off. Your moral compass is fucking south, mm. which means bad. Okay? <laughs> and, okay. You, so, you've, so, you've got a girlfriend. You've been dating her for three years. He's, his moral compass... Maybe, no, I'll tell you what you should do. She, she, he should not tell his girlfriend he's been cheating. Break up with her. Save her the heartbreak of knowing that she's been cheated on for a year. And you two should live your daily life together because you both meant for each other because you're not very good. She has no feelings for him. Yeah, she, so she says. I reckon she's lying. What do you mean? If, if she's asking herself if she's the arsehole. I don't think she has any feelings oh, at all. Oh, okay. Answer to this is you are the arsehole. Yeah. You're the biggest arsehole because I know that he's the one cheating, but you know that he has a girlfriend. Imagine, and just imagine. So you're going to be, let's go, let's say one day you, person asking if you're the arsehole, get a boyfriend, okay? Yeah. This all. Let's, let's say this all ends. Let's say this whole thing ends. Let's say in three years time. So in a year's time, you meet a boyfriend. You start dating him. You've been dating for two years. Yeah. Okay. And then he comes to you and he goes, oh, I've been, I've been cheating for like, you, you know, you walk in on him fucking another chick. Okay. Yeah. That is the fact he's friends with benefits with. That he's cheating with. Okay. And then you, you walk in on him and you're all upset, obviously. And then you ask, you're, you're like, you're like, what the fuck? And then yada, yada, yada. And she's like, oh my God, your girlfriend's here. And she's like, wait, you knew that he had a girlfriend? And she's like, well, yeah. And then she says to you, I mean, I don't give a fuck about you. He's the one that should be loyal to you. And you're like, and then you're thinking, you knew? You'd be like, you'd hate her more than him. Yeah. You fucking, honestly, I you, I know you haven't been a hypocrite yet, but you're going to be. And um, what's that? It's called, this girl code. Yeah. Like if you, and maybe give you the benefit of out when you first started being friends with benefits, you didn't know he had a girl. As soon as you found out, you should have stopped sleeping with him and told his girlfriend maybe mm. or just stopped and let him deal with it and say like he's a bad... Because you said, you know, it would be someone else if it wasn't you. Yeah. He's obviously a terrible guy. Throw him under the bus. Yeah, you're selfish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're both just selfish as hey, fuck. The things people do for sex astounds me. You are so fucking selfish. I'm sorry that the dilemmas had a sour twist yeah, to them. Whoa, yeah, whoa. Like, I feel like I'm like genuinely upset with all these dilemmas. I'm sorry, I'm sorry they were like that, but I think, oh, just maybe just check your moral compass. That's the last thing that comes down to is like... Who you are as a person. And if you're questioning who you are as a person, then like, don't do these silly things for a root. They're not worth it. No way. Do what you want to do. Be what you want to be. Relatables. We're back. We're back normal. Mood is high. Energy's getting back. We're trying. Yeah, we're going to try and get the mood up. That was negativity. This yeah. is... Worst thing a guy said after he finished. And IG. <laughs> wait, these, wait, these are fucked up. <laughs> oh, man. You guys, if these were all real, like you guys have fucking experienced some shit. It's crazy what girls experience out there. Okay. It's kind of cool having a big high female viewership because we do get to find out some We things. get an inside knowledge. Yeah, we learn some stuff. Some of these you might, I might, we might role play and I might be pretending I say them. I'm going to go first. So I just finished. I lied. I was a virgin until you. 
<laughs> Fuck. Imagine finding that oh out. Oh, my God. <sighs> imagine she's like, oh, you were pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I'm no, oh, imagine saying that. She goes, I could tell. <laughs> <laughs> that would break your heart, eh? Um, worst thing guys said after he finished, he goes, did you finish? I was honest and said no. And he goes, yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, fuck. Oh, this one's mean. Um, worst thing a guy said after he's finished, you can't tell people we had sex. It will ruin my reputation. Oh, fuck. No. Oh, my God. Oh, that's, oh, that's pain. Yeah, that's no. real pain. Mm. He just cried and said he missed his ex. Oh, I feel like that happens way too often. <laughs> oh, that, that one grinds my gears. Oh, oh. <laughs> fuck me. It's at the same time though. Like you got to like, I mean, you have to have sex. You get over someone, get under someone, you know? Yeah, like, just cry after they leave. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> Worst thing a guy said after he's finished. There goes my kids. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine the ick you'd get after that. Holy <laughs> shit. Oh. There goes my kids. <laughs> You can finish yourself off, right? (laughs) (laughs) Man did not care at all. I'm going to keep going. Make sure you get your period. Oh, what the (laughs) fuck? Yes, sir. (laughs) Quote, do you feel pregnant? (laughs) (laughs) Quote, I'm a magician. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck, it's hot in here. (laughs) Quote. I want you to meet my mum. Oh. What the fuck? I don't like that one at all. <laughs> that was some good sex probably. But then he's thinking about his mum. That's so weird. What yeah, makes you think about like, that? If I was having sex with a girl and then right after it, <laughs> and then you right after. S- me? Sex with a girl? What? Um, you need some mummy issues you need to deal with. And then, um, no, no. I'm talking like other way around. And like, she was like, thought it was so good. And she right after oh, it, yeah. she's like, oh, 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 that was so good. I really want you to meet my dad. <laughs> <laughs> That's still kind of a compliment. Honestly, facts. Yeah. Quote, do you want some muesli? So, what the fuck? <laughs> Wait, he's being gentle. He's being nice. I feel like sometimes you dude, hungry? dudes just don't know what to say. So they're like, oh, mm. um, yeah, yeah, do you want some muesli? I feel, what do, I feel like I just kind of like, I just don't say anything. And I just like, will like if I need to clean up, it's like, go clean up. And then I'll just like, it's like, you just like lay down and cuddle. Like nothing that's needs exact, to be said. That's exactly what I do. Nothing needs to be said. Just lay next to each other. You find a yeah. bit like, uh, Or like, uh, you could lay next to each other, cuddle for it. And you could be like, fuck, that was good. And like, yeah. it's just like, and then you can talk about it. Yeah, I know. You know? And then like, I don't know. Have you ever been like, <laughs> have you ever been like, any improvements, anything you want me to improve? Yeah, I, like, yeah, I feel like I do that too. And I'm like, and the, and if they're like, oh, let's try this next time. I'm like, yeah, facts. That's, that's what, what it right is. Yeah. Normally like the cuddling page and then it like dies down. And you're like, oh, it was, that good anything you want next time mm, exactly it's you know it's good when when you whatever you do you get to the point and then you cuddle and then she says that was good yeah you know it was good when she starts good that, job. that was good and then you're just like and then because you're kind of all hyped up and you've got a big head for a minute you're like anything i can improve on and some if it was really good they're like no nah, no nah, good good yeah, yeah, well, yeah. they can be like oh let's try this next time yeah and normally it's just like no nah, that was good but like and they say something like fun like a novelty thing and yeah you're like, yeah it's fun oh, i know yeah. um was you or me i think it's my turn yeah <sighs> Two minutes in, no foreplay. He goes, "Fuck it, I'm gonna come," and then I and then he goes, "I needed that." <laughs> <laughs> Man, you need to sort yourself out. I, I feel bad. Um, worst thing a guy said after he's finished: "If you get pregnant, would you get an abortion?" That's just you don't. Why would you ask that? <laughs> no, nah, I'm not a um, no. Nah. Just uh, no. If no. You, people get scared, eh? I think so. People get terrified. He was got up, looked at looked at himself in the mirror, and he goes, "I did it." <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. He sounds cute. <laughs> I did it. Yes. <laughs> Fucking uh, hell. Uh, worst thing a guy said after he's finished. Thanks, chef. Gave me a handshake. Thanks, chef. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He'd been cooking. <laughs> She'd been cooking. <laughs> oh man. You know what? You, you, know, you ever had someone say to you, um, like, "Oh, someone cooked here." Uh. No, I mean like oh, after, after sex, after sex, oh, no. after it, the way that they said it was good, instead of saying, oh, that was really, like, really good. They go like, there's like, they're like, someone's cooked here. I wouldn't even get the slang. Like I just didn't get that. Oh, yeah, okay. No. Well, basically what it means is like, you've, you've got experience. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I don't have, I don't have sex enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> quote, 
This was our, he, she wants to establish this was also after our first date. Yeah. <laughs> Quote, will you be my girlfriend? <laughs> That was some good. You should be proud of yourself, Kel. That was good. Good, good, good date. Good sex. Okay. So, do you want to get an Uber? Ouch. Oh man, I'd be like, you know what? I'd be like, nah. You can order it for me. I'm not paying for it. Oh, I would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, she knew like, what was. No, happening. I'm sleeping here. Yeah. Fuck you. This is my bed now. Move over. <laughs> Quote. I should go now. She'll be wondering where I am. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. That's it. <laughs> Fuck us. He farted and said, don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> the don't worry about it part is that's the good bit. Oh. Quote, Alexa, shuffle Michael Bublé. <laughs> That's smooth. <laughs> I like that one, eh? Oh, I would use Christ- that. I would use that back. Christmas- Ale- Wait, it's about to be Michael Bublé season. Yeah, no. Christmas Carol's coming out. He's got his Christmas Carol album. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fuck. I'd be like, we have Google Home. Shuffle. Smooth operator. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's this? <laughs> what's that song? I remember playing it in the car. I was, with, I was with a friend once and we went to pick a girl up that he was about to have a one night stand with. Yeah. And we were playing a song. Um. <laughs> Oh, it wasn't the song I just had sex. It was one where it was like talking about about to have sex. I can't remember. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking is. about? I, 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 I wish I could it. remember it. Um, yeah. Quote. Oh, this is cringy. Quote. Did Kitty like her milk? Oh, oh. No. Oh. Don't do it. I don't like that one. I don't like that one at all. <laughs> that one makes you feel weird. No, 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 no. Okay. I want you to do this one. Worst thing a guy said after he's finished. Oopsie, in a baby voice. You want me to do it? Do it. In my baby voice? Yeah. Oh, fuck. I need to get in the mood. Oh, that's fucked. Oh. <laughs> so check this little oopsie. I know exactly how I'm going to do this. Too. I don't know if I can do, like I can get into like a, oopsie. <laughs> I can't really. Imagine doing the, Oopsie. Imagine that. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, hey, oh, man. Whoopsie, whoopsie. All right. Not after, but during. I said, Fuck me. And he goes, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> least he's honest. <laughs> least he's honest. <laughs> but oh. if a girl's like, if, it, if, it, if the scenario is like, Oh, fuck me. Like, I don't think she's saying fuck me. I think she's like, oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Sometimes okay. you're in the, you don't know what's going on, but you're like, oh, I'm trying. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that would have just made me laugh. I know. Um, it's just when you just start going faster. My last one. Worst thing a guy said after he's finished, ask me questions about my ex. Oh, and that's not the time. Nah. There's never really a, I wouldn't say there's ever a great time imagine about say, that. Imagine saying like, who was better? Me or Jake? <laughs> oh, facts. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's in his own head. Yeah, I don't know if I ever want to know. Like, uh, I don't want to ask questions about that. Like, I it, it, like if they haven't told you you're the best sex they've ever had, then you don't want to be asking because you you don't want to ask questions that you don't want to know the answer to. No, nah, it doesn't matter. Like, I don't think it matters. Each individual person has like its own experience. No, nah, yeah, it exactly. Matter at all. Um, he didn't say anything. He turned over and played Clash of Clans. My man. My you, man, he's just, got priorities. You just smashed a nerd. He's like, babe, I just got a notification that I'm getting attacked. Yeah. <laughs> I got to go save the village. <laughs> you can watch if you want. And yeah, it's like, do you want to watch? And you, you, I just, if I was a chick, I'd be like, fine. Yeah. Fine. Fine. I just want to spend time with you. Oh, um, so that was, yeah, those are all from women, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what's the, what, do we, what could a girl say after sex? What do you want to, what do you want to hear? After you, so you, I'm a bit of, re, men need, what's it, constant reassurance? Men like a bit of reassurance, and I've also discovered that women do too. Just like g- we discovered, like women want guys to talk during sex. Just a g- good job. I wouldn't mind just like a, I don't know, if we go have a shower straight away, and then just like maybe she gives me a kiss and a hug, and she's like, "That was good." Yeah, I'd be like, "Oh, simple." I had a good time too. Just something sweet, like enough. It doesn't have to be complicated. Don't have to um, give me a chef's kiss. Just- or, I'd, or what I would want to hear is like same situation, but instead of her saying, "That's good," I would want her to be like. Next time, let's put it in the butt. Let's put it in my butt. <laughs> Is that what you want to hear? I'd be like, let's try it. <laughs> let's try it. Uh, on it dude, if you open, like, if you can't talk about, like, serious note, like, if you can't talk about how the sex was, like, I don't know, just 
don't have sex. Oh, girls like talk with confidence during sex too. Have you ever had a girl say to you, um, like, oh my god, it's so big? Like after, yeah, not during. Not during. No. Nah. No. No. Nah. Not during. Would you like it during? Do you reckon during you would be like during if she's like, um, like oh, like she's like you're like in the middle of it. It's like heated. I feel like that's it's like, like heated, and she's like, oh my god, it's so big, and you're like, and you're just like still going. It'd probably be good, but then mm, I, I feel like I'd like that. Yeah, 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 I think honestly, yeah, you're probably a little hack there. Even if you're like, it's not, just lie to him a little bit. Yeah, if you want a guy to start like, maybe that might make him come. Um, but you know what I want to hear after sex? What? I'm a little sore. Really? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so you're a little. I want, bit, I'm. I'm I want to hear like I'm a little sore. I'm simple. I'm just happy with. I'm like, becoming less vanilla, by the way. <laughs> oh, are you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're getting a little kinky. A little bit after this podcast. I'm happy with just good job. Yeah. Look. Oh yeah. Look. Yeah. I'm happy with good job. I'm good with that. Oh, but that like, was good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You want a bit of an excitement. I think I'm starting to want a bit. Yeah. yeah you're, you're gonna have to watch out for you. I right? know. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Let's not talk about this anymore. Yeah, far out. <laughs> What you want to do, be what you want to be, Relatables. All right, everybody. This has been like a, just like a bit of like, uh, just, I don't know. What's with all that? We've been like for the last two weeks, like, oh shit, including Patreon. We've been talking about sex. Yeah, we need to bring it back to life. I think we need it. Yeah. What do we, where did we go? Like, we've just been talking about sex. Yeah. We've, we've been in a loophole and we got mm. stuck in there. I feel like, yeah, that's, how, that's probably where you're getting your kink. But um, facts, hey, I wonder what, I can't, I wouldn't mind like, sorry, I don't really have a kink. Yeah. I don't have like a kink kink. I, I think, mind you, I think it one. comes with age when you get like more experience. Yeah. Like I feel like, yeah, I think we're getting too loosey goosey on the potty. We need to start being a little more PG. PG thirteen yeah, instead was of R eighteen. That was that was yeah. that, that was something different. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> I'm bringing it back to old wholesome. Yeah. Um. This is um. If you're new around here, we do a deep segment. Everything we like to hide a nice message within all the fun, mm. basically. So signs you're actually making progress in life. Oh. So. Oh. I didn't. I didn't know what the deep one was. Yeah. I actually. I never know what the deep one is, <laughs> and I just kind of like have to think on a whim. And Oddie comes in here all prepared and shit. Um. So, our our thing we often talk about is looking from. You get stuck in your own little bubble, mm. and you can't see from the um the outside perspective that you're actually doing all right. And you get stuck in this even the situation. You're like, ah, what's going on? Like, why is my life so hard? Yep. But if you were able to look outside, pop outside that bubble, and realize, well, you know what? Me compared to last year, I'm actually doing good. Like. But these are a couple of things that actually mean you're making progress. Mm. So we all measure progress by timing, milestones, and goals. In reality, progress doesn't feel like anything. Our life just starts to align rather than that perfect picture we paint in our mind. So the first sign that you're actually making progress is you've lost relationships. Maybe you look back and feel sad about everyone you've lost touch with. Maybe you reflect on all your would-be relationships and whether you tried hard enough or not. Maybe you think of all the friends and acquaintances you've crossed your paths and regretted um, not remaining close with them. Maybe you look back and think all the support and wonder what, um, why you chose on your own path. Losing a relationship is often a sign that we're growing into people we're supposed to be. Okay. That makes sense to me, actually. Yeah. Thinking about it. When you first said losing relationships, I was like, what the fuck? But then I think like, because like, you outgrow people. Yeah. Like my, I can think um, there's probably some friendships like that I'm thinking right now that like used to be my best friends. Mm. And I'm like, oh, what happened to that? But realistically, I'm growing on my own path and I'm growing as a person. And like they're growing there and they're on They're doing their own yeah. thing. And I'm, I can see that. And I'm like, wow, well, like I'm still, we still have mean well, but like we're just not as close as we used to be because we're doing our own thing. And that's a healthy thing that we're making progress and finding our own pathway through life. Mm. Okay, next sign is you're doubting your next step. If you're not doubting your next step, it's not the right step. I know that seems wrong, as though the most correct thing would be absorb any doubt, any fear, or any worry in your mind. The more right it is, the more you're going to have an unconscious, emotional, and often embedded emotion. You're scared because you care. You're doubting because you because it's unfamiliar. It actually seems something to you. It actually means something to you. You're nervous because it's unfamiliar. Too many people won't leap because they're afraid of the initial job, but they also never learn to spread their wings and they never arrive anywhere. That makes me feel good about a recent decision we made. <laughs> yeah. Like you just got like about doubting it. Yeah. yeah that makes we, me feel really had, good. Yeah. Being relatable that we had a big thing in our life and we're scared to take that first initial leap. And I think if we didn't do it, our wings 
we've never. I think we're growing wings. Yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly what it is. So take that leap of faith. That like, don't do the like everyone the nine to five that everyone tells you to do. Like, take that leap of like, go to do your business, go to start the DJ, go to do your little knitting side hustle. Do it. You yeah. can have that other stuff happen in the background. Okay, another sign you're making progress. I thought this one was pretty relatable. You feel slightly embarrassed of your past self. When you think back to who you were, or even just a year ago, you might cringe. Well, this is an incredibly valid experience to have and a common one at that. Please know that it's not a sign that you were an awful person before, but that you're coming into a greater self-awareness of who you, who you don't want to be. Your older self is no longer suited to manage the life you have today. And so you must transform into who you are now becoming. I like that one. Yeah. That one's fucking good. I, I remember when I was like thinking, thinking of like who I was, like things I did when I was like 18. On. Everyone done silly stuff because you're learning. You're just yep. stupid. And like yep. that's yep. what yep. life's yep. about. Fuck, that's actually a good one. You think like I do look back and I'm like, <laughs> I remember when you, I remember, <laughs> I remember what you, they were saying your parents used to say like, Wisdom comes with age. I was like, yeah, whatever, mum. You're just old. Yeah. Yeah. It's easier for you to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of making sense. Just like experiencing things firsthand. Yeah, exactly. No, I agree. Yeah. Okay, next one. You're slowing down. Rather than rapid, intense acceleration, you're interested in mindful, intentional decision-making. When we slow down, it's because we no longer are just running away from what's wrong, but learning to step towards what's right. Maybe you realize that you needed a break. Instead of trying to push through all of your body's signals that you're doing too much, growth is when we slow down and start to listen what our body's actually been trying to say all along. That's a big one for me. <sighs> yeah, yeah. I was actually thinking this morning. I was like, I went for a walk this morning and I saw this older couple. Mm. They were walking, strolling, they were nice and slow. And I was like, and I was like, I don't know. what I, I just like had this weird thought where I was like, oh, like, why do... Like, I believe, what's about that they have quite a slow life? Mm. And also, like, their whole life was probably, like, you know, like, they were just happy with the jobs they had. And they went through life and then they retired and now they're just happy, going for their walks every morning and shit. Mm. And, like, and I was trying to think, like, why is it so difficult to for me to just accept, like, you know, I don't even know how to put it into words, but basically I was, like, I'm not, like, like I'm a happy guy. But whenever I have nothing to do, I feel like I'm wasting time, even though I've done a lot. So it's like, so I was thinking like, do some people just like not like to do nothing? I was like, oh, well, should I just accept the fact that I don't like to do nothing? So it's like me being busy is me being happy. Like, do some people just happier when they're busy? Is that what it is? You know what I mean? Is that, is you doing something, let, not letting your body think and like you're just not I don't know. Yeah. Body? I don't know though. So that's what I was thinking. Cause it's like, maybe I don't want to be stuck with my own thoughts. Yeah. And then, like, I just feel guilty for not doing anything because I feel like I'm always like trying to be one percent better each day, which is good. But then it's also toxic at the same time because I don't know how to chill. Yeah, it's difficult. It's very difficult. It's a tough to navigate. To, it's so tough to find the, the middle ground. But it's, yeah. but often like it's right. Like when here's like a potty relate. When the potty slows down and like it's bad, but like views or listens or anything, we're like, oh fuck, what do we do? Yeah. But like realistically, like fine yeah it's fine yeah we stress about it too much yeah so. and that's like taking anything when your job slows down or you've been in a job for a couple of years you're like oh fuck this is just like the norm now it's so boring like that's mm. fine every humans just want new shit all the time it's so dumb we're never happy with no yeah. not at all okay you're starting to care more about how you feel as opposed to what other people think that's a big one for a sign you're like you're actually progressing in life yeah stop living by an invisible set of rules set forth by people who don't even walk in your shoes oh, there's one more you're more concerned with being happy now than successful. This is a tremendous sign of progress. Though it might look like on the surface as though you're doing less and being less ambitious, you're becoming ambitious in a way that truly matters, your heart, soul, and spirit. Yeah, that last one I reckon I'm not at yet. <laughs> I think I, I think you are to an extent. The way I mean, like, I want to be happy, but also I'm currently, like, in the... I just, I'm like, oh, my God, I just want to fucking get there. I just want to get there. I just want to get there. That's what I'm... Like, I'm not saying I want to get there and then I'll be happy. Like, I know that... Like I, I, I've always preached like it's, I think happiness is a choice and I am happy, but it's like it's, there's a part of me that I fight against. I think you made, I think you sort of started listening to your heart when you quit being apprenticed and that's when you started listening to yeah, your Yeah, oh no, I definitely did then. Yeah, definitely. And like it's a leap of faith doing this as well and I think that's when you're doing it yeah. as well because it's like risky and unknown. Yeah, definitely. But there's like, that's a, that's a way to look at, look, if you, any of those things are happening in your life, actually you're doing all right. You're just getting outside the bubble. That was from a book. It was called... This is how you heal. 
mm. by Brianna Weist, I think. Yep. And um, it's quite interesting. And yeah. it's, it's just a get out of your bubble when you be. Um, where I'm often have too you hard. Been reading, mate? Have you been reading, mate? You've been reading a bit. Oh no, that was props to my significant other. She significant g- other. Yeah. Oh, hey. yeah. Um, she Big gave, announcement. She gave me that um, book. She's been reading it, and she gave me all the highlights, and I just abbreviated it. Yeah, that was quite interesting. You hear that? Mm. Off the market. It's a bad day to be uh, be an Oddie fan. Oh, unlucky. unlucky. Time, time to be a Jake fan. Yeah, that's it. Fuck hey. this Oddie Jump guy. on the bandwagon <laughs> over here. <laughs> do what you want to do. Be what you want to be. Relatables. Okay, we're back with... This episode's been funny. I don't know. It's been like a intense... We just got super like upset in the dilemmas. Yeah, yeah. I, I just got angry because like, don't waste my time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it was like sexual and then it was like, deep. no, it's just- It's a, been a little all over the It's a roller place. coaster and we're like feeling it. Yeah. But that's what we are, the relatables. But we're back to our roots. This is guy code. Things guys do when they like you. <laughs> and to kick things off, I think this is me massively. Things guys do when they like you, we will roast you. Oh, hey, that's actually no. That's true. We will roast that's true. the fuck out of it's you. It's an age-old saying. Yeah. If he's being mean to you, that means he likes you. Mm. Honestly, that's. I remember when you're a kid. That's what it they runs, say. It runs through. Yeah. You go in, you complain. Like I remember going in and being like, "Oh, she was some like such and such said this man that they're like, oh, she's got a crush on you." And I was like, "No, she doesn't. She, she was mean." Mm. I facts. agree. It's facts. Still, it still happens. Facts. It still happens to this day. Yeah, exactly. Things guys do when they like you. They'll think about you when they're at the gym. Ooh. <laughs> All these other girls walking around, I don't care. Yeah, She is the only girl in my mind. Exactly. I agree with that That's one. how you know you like a girl. Yeah. Is that, that I'm that's how we, that's how we know. That's how you think you're thinking about them at the gym. 100%. When you're, normally you're in the fields too. You're like, no, I don't, I'm think I'm going to do these extra sets for her. Mm, exactly. She's yeah. getting me through this tough one. She needs a good body in her life. She's yeah. hot. I need to look hot. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Things guys do when they like you. We'll make a secret handshake with you. Oh, I actually never thought of that. Yeah. True. We oh my God. Too. And you'll like go up and you'll like make it up on the spot too. Like, mm, 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 mm. And I think I figured out why. Why? I think it's to break the touch barrier without being like a suspect. Like Damn, it's, it's yeah, just like- Yeah, you're like early days. Yeah, it's early days. Like you're probably just like, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Ashley, what's up? Yeah, oh, that's a good one. That's yeah. a good one. Uh, things guys do when they like you. When we are with you, we will never let you touch a door handle. Ooh. <laughs> Romance isn't dead. If we, chivalry isn't dead. Chivalry sorry. is not dead. If we make an effort yeah. to open all the doors do for it, you. I need to do it more, man. Don't you do it. Do it. Like, do you do car? Oh, yeah. Hundred percent. I don't do that. I eh? do. I do. Like, car's the only one I do 100% of the time. Other things, I'll, I'll just, like I'll, let it slide. I'm picturing you open your gets for your girl. Mm. <laughs> oh, I don't do it. Car, yeah. I do 100%. You made me switch on. I need yeah. to do that. Yeah, you I need don't. to do car. Because what it is as well is like, just, and it's just like, if you get it to be like a habit, like mm. second nature, it's almost like, it's a little thing where it's like, I can open my own door. And you're like, I know you can. Like you, you could be like, I know you can open your own door. It is a habit. I need but to get, I'm doing it I need it to make it my you. habit. Yeah, That's exactly. Good. You need to get in the habit of it. And then like, what? and then yeah, you'll just be like the best boyfriend ever. Good point. Thanks for mm-hmm. that. Okay. Um, they always offer to drive. Girls. We, we guys do? Yeah. Yeah, facts. If we like yeah. you, like. Well, oh yeah. If you say I'll drive, you're like, no, no, no I'll drive. I'll no, drive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. an ox. You're I'm, an ox. I'm you're my little, you're my passenger princess. Yeah. You're my little, <laughs> you're my little princess. I want my passenger princess. Hey, but the day that they do this thing where they go this. Put legs away from you. Yeah. You're driving next time. Yeah. It's my turn. You're done. <laughs> uh. um, things guys do when they like you. When in the talking stage, we will save boyfriend slash girlfriend memes <laughs> to send to you just in case we date. We do it. <laughs> we do do it. Because you don't want to act psycho. Yeah. You don't want to send it to him straight away and scare him off. So you'll save him. You should see my like videos. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you should see my fucking Instagram saved yeah. things. It's ridiculous. It's crazy. I love when your brain just starts thinking about them too. Yeah. You're like, oh, my and, you, and you like that video and you're like, I know they're going to like this, but I can't send it yet. It's too soon. It's too soon. Okay. This one, I was I've actually thought mine are more like things we don't realize we're doing. Okay, okay. Things guys do when they like you. We'll ask you if you like shade, facial hair, like what do you like, and we'll do it. Oh, facts. Yeah. Oh my god. Yes. Oh, oh my god. Because normally that's yeah. so true. I will definitely make if someone said to me like, "Oh, I like a bit of stubble." I would keep. I would one hundred percent keep stubble. Exactly. That's so weird. Yeah. 
And you don't even, I don't really realize I'm doing it. That's, nah. Yeah, you just said that. Because I'll, I'll cop a like stubble for way longer than if she says like, oh, I don't like it. And I'll yeah. be like, oh, I'm shaving every couple of days. Damn. I'll, I, I, if a girl like, if a girl like shave face, I would shave every day. Yeah, you're hair to I, I could shave. I can every get day. about three days out of oh, without getting a bit. Jealous of yeah. that. <laughs> jealous of that. You have no idea. Things guys do when they like you. Mm. We will, we will recommend you our favorite shows, even though it's a risk whether or not you'll like it. What do you mean? So it's like, we like you enough to be like, oh, no, you have to watch this oh, show. Oh, yeah, that means something and to me. also, we will watch shows that a girl recommends. <laughs> that one's way better. We will watch a show that a girl recommends. Oh, I know I like a girl when she's mentioned some soppy thing that I knew I won't like, yeah. but I'll watch it just so we have something to talk just about. Just because I want to <laughs> talk to you about it. I just want to talk. Oh, my. I'll sit through shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'll sit through rubbish. I will sit through shit I'll watch you. Gossip Girl. <laughs> yeah. Fucking hell. In the old days, they used to fight for you in like wars. Now we shit through shit. Yeah. We sit through shit. We sit through absolute shit. <laughs> oh, Things guys do when they like you, we get like real fidgety and like can't sit still because we're thinking about like you and what you like too much. And I always, well, I do anyway. Okay. You're just like, oh, yeah. It's, a little, it's almost, almost a little bit of nerve. Yeah, that's it's like what a it bit is. of nerve. Yeah. yeah, okay. I hear you. I hear you. Um, things guys do when they like you, we'll look at you without talking. Oh, look, give you that look in the eyes. I feel like what we like, we look and like admire. It's kind of like, yeah. You're kind of like, oh, I'm here. Yeah. That's I, what I feel like I do. I feel like I look and I'm like, oh, I'm here. I feel like it's like when you like him, like you're trying to, like you're making a connection further than just like speech. Mm. Like I'm looking, what's making you tick? Yeah. What's so you? If you catch him staring. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. It's if good. you catch him staring, don't do that thing where you're like, what? Yeah. Even though we'd love it, but like we're not going to tell you what. We're going to be like, nothing. Mm -hmm. We're just going to say nothing. Mm. Yes. Yeah, you can't tell the truth. We say nothing. Yeah. You can't tell the truth. <laughs> okay. Next one. We'll introduce you to our dogs. Or family dogs. Oh, shit. This is my boy. Getting a dog. Oi, getting introduced to a dog is like getting introduced to a parent. Literally. Jesus Christ. Be it's careful, like, girls. Though. I think my dog will like you. No, no, no. Be careful. I'll be like, if my dog doesn't like you, you're out. Oh, yeah. You're Dude, done. Facts. Facts. You're that goes dog. both ways. I think that's the same way. The same thing as girls with guys. Yeah. If my dog doesn't vibe with you, then yeah, you're on the streets. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the streets. Things guys do when they like you. If I find a good movie that I want to watch, I'll wait until I'm with you to watch it. The wait, man. We will wait. If we really, really like you, we'll wait. And if and like if we start a show together, but it's a good show, and I'm like, fuck, I want to keep watching this, I'll I'll still wait and mm. still wait till I'm with you. I will. I love yeah, it. I love if that I like one. you. Yeah, that's big, eh? Mm. We're, we're, we're intriguing creatures. Yeah, we are quite intriguing. We're, I think we're simple but also kind of like a little not simple. Mm, yeah, mm. we are a little bit. Okay, this one isn't us to an extent, but I feel like it's relatable for men. Mm -hmm. Things guys do when they like you, we'll let you sit there and watch while we're playing Xbox or PlayStation because that's when we're most vulnerable. Okay. I mean, I don't know though. Like, I reckon. I don't the think The typical that, male. Uh, I mean, the way I see that one is lazy. like- No, just, I mean, the way I see that is like, like if I like if I like I don't play video yeah, we don't, games. We both don't. Neither of us play video games, but I feel like even let's just say I did play video games. Yeah. If I really liked you, I wouldn't play video games when you're around. Mm, maybe good. You point. know, it's I like I would much rather be hanging out with you. Well, I agree. I suppose it's like my um the way I saw it is like video games to a lot of people is like a movie or like reading a book. So, like, that's their thing they do every afternoon or every night. That's their thing. Okay. And if I let you be there. And also, like, you, with like that's when you're most vulnerable because you're, like, being a little nerd. Fair, but I, I do see you. I do see your yeah. one as well. So, that one's a bit tricky. That's a bit borderline. I could be wrong. Mm, I, yeah, do I don't know. Your... I do know that girls fucking hate it. Yeah, okay. They hate it. And there's I don't think ever, that you're ever going to... No guy will change their mind on whether or not it's good or not. Like, mm. I think I, it's... Re, I, honest to God, I honestly think 99% of women would say... That a guy that is like obsessed with gaming is a bit of an ick. Okay. But no. I think there would be some people that are like, no, I don't care. Yeah. But I think like not, I, honest, I would confidently say like 99%. True, true. I could be wrong on that one. Mm. I'm open to re I'm rebuttals. Yeah. I think I got a couple more. Um, going along the same hairline, the same hair one with your face, sorry. Oh, same, same, same hair, hairline. hairline. Um, <laughs> things guys do when they like you, they'll get a haircut based on what you like. 
Oh, yeah, facts. You don't get a mullet because she doesn't like it? Yeah. I want to shave my head and she's like, no, I like your hair. Like, whatever. Yeah, Fine. I know. I, but also, you know what I find is really funny is like um, guys will just like, um, just like get a haircut yeah. without asking. And like if a girl likes you, she'll be like, what do you think if I get this haircut? Yeah. She'll ask you. I love when they ask your opinion. Yeah. But at the same time, like if our girl said like, I think you'd look really good with long hair. I will not be touching. Oh yeah, yeah. I but value her. Like, I value her opinion. Yeah, but if I like a girl and she's like, "No, I, I like your hair short," you best believe I'm getting a haircut the I, next day. I agree. That's fucking facts. I agree. My last one was. I thought this was a subconscious one. Things, especially now, things guys do when they like you. Well, show us like old pictures of ourselves, and like laugh together, like when we used to look like a funny in a different way. Okay, yeah. you reckon? Like when we were like vulnerable and ugly and shit. Yeah, well, yeah. When you're like confident with a girl, when yeah. You're, like, when you like her and like she likes you, she definitely like the best feeling in the world is saying something and like being vulnerable, and then it's like they take it well. Yeah. And then you're just like, I feel you feel really. You don't regret it after the fact. I, like, like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Going through like your camera rolls together of all your old pics and stuff. I feel like that's when you that's like such each a other. Dangerous game though. Oh yeah, that's when you mean. Like that's when you know it's like, oh, I like you. Going through. But what if you find something you don't? Know? Yeah. <laughs> God, that that's is scary. So <laughs> scary. That is scary. Actually, you're very. You're a gambling man if you do that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But that was. Yeah. Things like things guys do when they like you. you brought us back. What you wanna do, be what you wanna be, relatables. Different outro this week, so I'm not gonna be seeing no, I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But a friend of mine has released a song and I she sent it to me and I listened to it and it's really good. Mm. And let me tell you, if it wasn't good, I would have told her like, oh no, we don't do shout outs. <laughs> but I really liked it. Okay. And so I was like, oh shit, I actually would like to send some people her way. So her name, if you go on Spotify. So you can either look up Norway, like N O R W A Y, or they'll I believe they'll probably get lost. Or I believe um, you can look up her name, which is Bianca. So B I A N C A, and her last name is Mutakura. M U T U K U R A. Where did you find this person? I used to work with her. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, she's Australian. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Muta Nora. I was like, where's that from? Yeah. So I don't know where her name's from, but it's difficult to pronounce. I definitely butchered that. Yeah. So she has a song out. It's called Sinners and Saints. And I fucking listened to it. It's fucking good, eh? Ooh. And I was like, I was like shocked. I was like, oh. I love like upcoming talent. Yeah. Like all so the- she's pretty talented in that area. Yeah. So go, um, go get that listen. Listen. So that's, so I'm sorry. I'm not singing this week. I wanted to give a friend a shout out and yeah, enjoy that song. Go. And then, like, if you can just go let... Maybe you can let us know if you like it or you can go let her know if you like it. Yeah. Save relatable sent you. I agree. Um, yeah, so basically, five stars, that shit. Yeah, we've got a five star. We're finishing the year on a high, everybody. Thank yep. you, everybody, for getting this far through. Thanks for sticking around. And um, um, see you on Patreon. Fucking subscribe. Patreon. Patreon. See ya. Be what you wanna be, relatables. relatables.